So, number eight, prove this identity for combinations. Again, it's using that recurrence pattern established in Pascal's triangle, whereby to get the following term below, you add two consecutive ones together to get the term below the second of them. So if that was the row n, the answer's in row n plus 1. And whatever this is, if that's r and that's r plus 1, that'll be r plus 1. So the same thing's happening here, only there's three parts. There only, should only be two that add together. That's because this can be split. It would normally be nr plus nr plus 1, meaning any particular one plus the one next along in that row. And all that happens here is I've got another one, I've got nr plus 1 plus nr plus 2. So this left hand side, I should have written that down first, is just equivalent to two separate recurrence patterns. I've got the nr plus the nr plus 1 should drop down to, so this part should become n plus 1, dropping down to the next row. If that's row n, this will be row n plus 1 of r plus 1. And this one simply says, well, if I've got nr plus 1, and I stay in the same row and go to nr plus 2, then those two together would produce this one down here. So they would produce in the next row, in n plus 1, r plus 2. But these are also consecutive ones, so those two together would add up to give the one below the second one, dropping down to the next row, n plus 2. So those two together would give me n plus, whoops, n plus 2, and the one below the second one, r plus 2, just by using the recurrence relation for the combination coefficients using Pascal's triangle. Still with number 8 here. As an alternative to using the recurrence pattern for finding these particular combinations to show that it equals to that, you could use the definitions of these combinations and work through the factorials algebraically to arrive at that. It's a little bit nastier, but it's good algebraic practice when working with factorials. So it go this way. I start off with the left hand side. It's going to take quite a bit of space. Spelling each of these out, you've got this NCR means N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial plus two times N factorial over r plus 1 factorial times n minus the r plus 1 factorial. So n, so 1 minus r plus 1 is the same as minus r minus 1 factorial plus n factorial over r plus 2 factorial times n minus r plus 2. So n minus r also minus the 2 factorial. Now, when it comes to adding them into a single fraction, you need to know which are the greatest parts of the denominators. Well, r plus 2 is the greatest part, but I'll need a note of these. r plus 2 is bigger than, factorial is bigger than that, because r plus 2 factorial means r plus 2 times 1 less than that, r plus 1 times 1 less than that, r, etc. So you could just stop there and say r factorial. Similarly, the largest of these is n minus r factorial, because that means n minus r times 1 less than that, n minus r take away 1, times 1 less again, n minus r minus 2, only if I'm stopping there I'll just say factorial to indicate the rest of them. I'll need to refer to that when it comes to getting the correct numerators. So making that into a single fraction then, I want, right, what's the greatest denominator I can have? I've got r plus 2, r plus 2 factorial for that, they'll all go into that, and for the other one, n minus r, n minus r factorial. The other thing is I'll take out the n factorials just as a common factor just now, so I'll put that at the beginning. So, what do I still need? Right, for the first one, I've got r factorial, I need to multiply it up to r plus 2, I've got r factorial, so I'll need to multiply the top and the bottom by these two factors, so I'll need to do r plus 1 times r plus 2 to generate that part of it, and I've got all of that, so that's the first term done. Plus 2 times r plus 1 factorial. I'll need to multiply that by r plus 2 to get to r plus 2 factorial. So that'll be r plus 2 
n minus r minus 1 to take it up to just n minus r. I'll have to multiply it by n minus r. I'm like this. I'll have to multiply it by that to get up to this. Plus, r plus 2 factorial. I've got all of it, but I'm 2 below this one. So I'll need to multiply this by two more terms to build it up to this one. I'm down here. I'll need to multiply it by these two. So that's n minus r times n minus r minus 1. So I've got this thing to work out. So tidying this lot up then, having that out of it. I've got r plus 2 factorial, n minus r factorial. Now multiply it all out. Well, that bit's easy. r squared plus 3r plus 2. That's a bit nasty because that 2 at the front and a bit of jiggery pokery with these two. So I've got nr doubled, 2nr, minus r squared doubled, minus 2. R squared, 2n doubled, 4n, minus 2r doubled, minus 4r. Now I've got six parts here. I've got, just to spell out, I've got n squared, minus nr, minus n, minus another nr, plus r squared, and finally plus r. Look at a bit nasty, but this will all tidy up. So just a case of looking through them for what cancels. Well, R's first of all, what we do? R squared. I've got R squared and minus 2R squared and R squared. There, they'll go. R squared, minus 2R squared, R squared. That's gone. What about the single R's? How are they going to go? I've got 3R minus 4R plus R. They're going to go. 3R plus R minus 4R. That's gone. What about the combinations of N's and R's? I've got 2NR minus NR, so they're going to go 2NR. And finally, I'm just left with, and that's the nice part, just a little binomial, that's an M quadratic in N. So all I'm left with is N squared plus 3N. I've got N squared plus 3N plus 2 times that N factorial. All over R plus 2 factorial, N minus R factorial. But that factorises to n plus 2, n plus 1 over r plus 2 factorial, n minus r factorial. And of course, that just builds up to n plus 2 factorial because it's the one less than the one less again. So that comes to n plus 2 factorial over r plus 2 factorial. This seems to be spoiling it a bit because if that's the pattern I'm looking for, this should be n minus that, but it is, because I can add and subtract terms as I will, because it wouldn't affect that. If I've got n minus r, I could make it n plus 1, as long as I do minus r plus 1, because I've got a plus 1 minus a 1. So I could equally well just change that into n plus 1 minus r, sorry, n plus 2, minus r plus 2, factorial. It's the same thing which equals, just what that says, n plus 2, r plus 2, which equals the right-hand side, thus demonstrating the identity algebraically.